Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'd like to show you a technique that I think most people have forgotten these days. Um, it's called procedural modeling. And it's the process of using either vertex colors, which I'll be showing you today, um, or by creating masks and other programs like Photoshop. And you use this technique in order to layer on very fine geometry onto your characters or onto your objects um, that you would otherwise only achieve through having a very high resolution displacement map. Um, and this, techniques, this technique leverages the procedural maps in 3D Studio Max in order to, to really bring out the very fine details um, in your render. So let's take a look at it here. I've started off with a very simple scene. It's got a, a geosphere with a lot of tessellation. I'm using the mental ray renderer and uh, I'm gonna actually turn this down to 0.5. So uh, as per another Monday movie I've done, I'm gonna go into my displacement settings and I'm gonna turn it down to uh, half a pixel edge length just to kind of you know make those details pop. So let's apply a vertex paint modifier and I'll show you what uh, what tools you need to know about in order to make this technique work. So in my modify uh, pull down, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here and select vertex paint. It's going to bring up the vertex paint rollout. And uh, there are a lot of tools on here, but the, the general idea is that it allows you to paint onto the vert vertices of your object as though it were a kind of low resolution image. I'll show you what I mean here. In order to paint off right off the bat, let me show you what you need to do. First, go to the vertex color display shaded, and that will show you what you're painting. So this allows you to see what you're doing. The next thing that you need to do is click on vertices right here. And that says, I want to paint on vertices as opposed to wanting to paint on uh, polygons or uh, an element in the object. And then finally, you need to select which polygons or which um, which vertices you want to paint. So I'm going to select all of them, Control A. So now I can paint anywhere I want. Now, a word of caution: this is something that you should do every time that you're using vertex paint. Right off the bat, you're using a all white canvas, but vertex paint later on in your, in the pipeline of this technique gets kind of weird with perfect white and perfect black colors. So I'm going to select black which is what I'm going to want to paint with anyway. I'm going to select perfect black, click OK. I'm going to turn my opacity down to 1. Right here I can set my opacity. And then I'm going to click on this paint bucket, paint all, just once. So what that did is it turned all of the white areas into just barely darker than perfect white. So this way, um, later on in the pipe if I forget that I've done this or if I forget that that I painted pure white somewhere uh, it won't it won't show through so I'm gonna turn my opacity back up here I'm gonna make it um, maybe 50 and I'm just gonna start you know painting in a little bit of detail here kinda keep it keeping it smooth and now you can kinda see what I'm talking about in terms of working with a very uh, a very low resolution image, right? Because it's kind of chunky and you can even see it trying to interpolate across vertices. I'm gonna turn my opacity back down here. Keep it nice and low. So when you're working with a displacement map like we're about to do, you want to really keep it blurry. Nice gentle transitions. Unless what you need is a very sharp transition, like you're working on your character's face, for example, and you want, you know, those cheekbones to have really sharp scales but then you want the rest of the face to, to be a little bit easier on the scales well you can do that alright this is looking good and now before we move on I need to do the reverse of what I did when I first started I need to turn my opacity back down to one I need to select a perfect white and click OK actually rather than perfect white we want just one shy of it so 254 I click OK and now we're going to do the same paint bucket technique, paint all. And that's going to make all of my perfect black that I painted a second ago just slightly brighter than black. So that way it doesn't end up turning out weird. All right, this looks good. I'm going to close my vertex paint rollout. And then I'm going to open up my material editor. 
So now we're going to switch over to the to the material side of things. I'm going to apply this material. And in order to sort of show you what you what we're looking at, I'm going to apply a gradient ramp material or a gradient ramp gradient ramp map to this material, which is right here. And what this gradient ramp is going to do is it's going to say, okay, for vertex colors going from white to black and all colors in between, map them to these colors, black to white, so it's inverted by default. So you'll want to change that um, if it bothers you. But for this example, we can just remember it. In order to make this link, in order to make the gradient ramp work off of the vertex color map, we need to change that here. Vertex color channel under the mapping pull down. And now when I render, because this is in the diffuse slot, we'll see these vertex colors show through on the object. Cool trick, huh? So we can see that um, it didn't get inverted after all. Okay, well there you have it then. So it's going from white to black. These areas are being painted directly onto the object, so they have uh, no bearing on the UVW mapping, which is really cool. Let's make this into a displacement map. Let's use this for procedural modeling. So I'm going to take this gradient ramp, I'm going to drop it into another slot because I'm going to need it somewhere else in a second. Make an instance of it. Back on the original material, I'm just going to go up to the parent. I'm going to open up the maps rollout, disable diffuse color, and I'm going to enable the displacement. Displacement, we can turn that down to 10 just for this example. And for the map, I want to mix. Here's where this gets cool. In the mix, you can apply the original material that you would have given your character or your object, the displacement map that you brought in from Photoshop. And in the other slot, you can put whatever you want, like cellular, uh, speckle, splotch, you know, whatever. So in this example, I'm just going to leave uh, white as white. So it's just going to, the displacement is just going to fade out. And in the black, I want um, cellular. Keep it nice and easy. Uh, I'm just going to make this look cool here. A little bit bigger. Chips. Fractal. I like to enable fractal for this technique because the reason that you're doing it is because you want those micro poly displacement effects. You want the really fine details. And if you don't turn on fractal, you're just going to get one level of, uh, of chips and it's, you know, it's not really going to add very much. So we're looking good here. Okay, and then for the mix map, I want that gradient that we made, right? So now the gradient being controlled by the vertex colors is going to now control the mix between my cellular map and the white swatch, or in your case, the cellular map and your character's original displacement map. Let's go ahead and render. Let's see what this looks like. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we do this, because now we have a nice, smooth, even combination of the two displacement maps. One could be controlled by anything like a swatch or another image and this is controlled by the the procedural texture map. It's controlled by the cellular map so we can get any level of detail that we want in here and it's all controlled from within 3D Studio Max. The best part of this is now I can go back into my vertex paint modifier and I can, for example, start messing around with this. I can say, okay, you know what, I, I changed my mind about about this color. I don't really want, uh, you know, all this right here. So I can just paint it back, re-render, and then see what it looks like. And there you go. So this is a very powerful technique, even though it's sort of fallen out of favor with modern tools competing against it. I encourage you to try it out for yourself and see what it can do for you. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday Movie. You can find all of my Monday Movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website www.mrbluesummers.com.